The following audio is intended for mature audiences and contains adult content, graphic language, graphic violence, and strong sexual content. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Fedori, everyone. My name is Tony, otherwise known as Slade. I am your DM for this regretful evening after the last session. No regrets. I am here with Norbit, uh, Mouse, twenty dollars is twenty dollars, and Rhaegar. Uh, hey! Then there's also Milani this time. I was about and to thankfully say. she is back, and I'm thankful that she is back. Hope that you had a wonderful Mother's Day. Uh, seeing as how you were not here on the last session and could not make it. Yeah. Made her dinner. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well. I do need to give a brief recap, seeing as how as Milani was not able to be with us for that session. So last we left off, our players managed to sail into at least one good day, and then followed up by another 24 hours where they encountered a massive pirate ship followed by two other smaller ships that were in a group together that were divvying up a shit ton of gold. Let's say it that way. And uh, you guys successfully managed to not only take out the two smaller boats, but also kill the captain, break the helm entirely, refix the helm, steal the boat, kill everybody on the ship, by using uh, the crop duster, quite literally, shitbag's ass, the crop and duster. as a crop duster, and now you're all on this new boat. It's quite literally, how that entire session went down is they single handedly took over a boat that they were not supposed to meant to have. That's where we are now. All of you are on the big boat. All of you. The boat has a a thing on it to where that it is big enough to where that it can pretty much use your other boat as like what would you call it? A safety dinghy on the end of the Titanic. Yeah, it's basically that. Like it's that big. So it can holster up that big fishing boat and put it to the side of the ship and you guys can use it whenever you see fit but it doesn't have the capacity of the uh the mansion like the smaller boat does so it's actually bigger on the inside of the smaller boat than it is on the bigger boat which makes absolutely zero sense but hey that's how fucking magic works tardis TARDIS. Don't worry, we'll fix that. I mean, technically, we have this boat on our boat, so isn't it really like we've got a boat inside of a boat inside of a boat? And pretty much, yeah. Mansion inside of a boat inside of a boat. Yeah, there you go. It's boatception. Boatception. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. Guns. But yeah. Lots so, of guns. You've got this giant ship. Before I force Rhaegar to roleplay, or not role play, but role for the encounters. We don't have access to that boat. Can we all get access to said boat? You have access. I just said that y'all of you were on that boat. No, no, I no, mean like on roll 20. Oh. Yeah. I would like to have access so I may put in stats. Because it's got the same stats as the little boat, right? I think we only have access to the little one, right? No. I'm going to give, I'm gonna give oh, it, it to my... I haven't looked at it. Give it to me! I, give it to me! I'm going to give it to Milani because she's the more sensible one out of all of you. Yay! Uh-huh. Are we on a new day, Tona? Not yet. We will okay. be. Will, you will be. So I'm going to give you guys the option to role play here now that you've got this new boat and 100 platinum uh, worth of gold. Yes. We had ethereal engine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's where you guys, I'm giving you the option to role play now. Because there's a lot of stuff that I needed you to read now that you own the rights to this ship, quote-unquote, that are very important in order to operate this boat. Huh. Mm -hmm. Wait, we have, a, we have a child elemental inside of this engine. Yes. Well, that's rude. Can we at least 
Is it well, mad? that's what I'm saying is that you can go and role play and check out the ship and see what you want to see. Yes, 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 I yes, yes, know yes, what yes, I yes. want to do. Oh God, I'm just gonna write Jenny on the side but of the ship. I, Jenny. There are some very important details that are on this stat sheet for this ship that I needed all of you to read, and if you didn't read them and mark off the points of interest that cause this ship to function the way it's supposed to function, a lot of bad shit can happen. Yep. Okay, you're in about the weather manipulation, right? I'm I'm just going to leave it up to you to go in and read it yourself and let you determine that. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So um question. Yes. We already spoke to the captain of the other ship yet? You killed the other guy on the other ship. No, no, no. The, the no, one no. that was on our ship original. The, uh, the you have not. Dragon. You haven't spoken no. to him since he's gotten back on the smaller boat and joined up with back up with you guys to get on this larger boat. I would like to do so. Okay. All right. So you go up to the captain. What do you say? We own this bitch. <laughs> we own this bitch, and I'm willing to pay you to fucking be our crew. Simple as straight up. Okay. I don't think that's going to work. I'm going to start off by making you roll a perception check. Before... It's his crew we used to take it over. It's his, you, yeah, but we, I fix this fucker. I will break it. <laughs> roll a perception check. A nine. Okay, you don't you don't see anything, okay? Just pigeon. Uh, You can roll for pigeon if you want. He has a passive of 14. Can I not use that? Sure. I'll say 14 high enough. Pigeon looks to you and says, look at his arm. I look at his arm. You've noticed something that wasn't on there before. It looks like a weird tattoo. It's a tattoo of what looks to be kind of like a rune. Okay. But you're not 100% sure. But it was not there before. He actually looks at it and says, what the fuck is this? Can I use identify on it? Uh, yeah, you can try. I will try. Uh, there is no spell attached to it, but you do identify that the marking is how he is able to control the ship. He is now the captain of the ship. Do I find out anything about him, though, as well, with identify? Because it also tells me any spells affecting whatever I'm, like, the creature. Uh, he's a warlock, and that, I mean, it's information that you already know about him that he's a warlock and that he um he's serving a patreon uh that is connected to uh the tiamat sisters okay can i ask him a question and this is gonna link to a theory that i've got sure go for it i look the captain dead in the eye wait you killed the former captain of this ship right I don't remember. So, like, after I smoked that joint, the last thing I remember is I smoked that joint and I blacked out. And then I woke back up here or back on my ship and we now have this giant boat sitting in front of us and all of this fucking gold that's just sitting here. I look at, I look at Mouse and Norbit and I, I ask, do, you, any, do either of you remember seeing this guy, like, make the final blow to the former captain. No. I remember him doing that that, that, that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All kinds of rage and shit. I mean, I, 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 can't, I, I can't just turn around and straight up ask Tony, did, did, did this guy kill the former captain? Now, the, the only thing you know is that now that you've walked up to him and then Norbit mentions it, is that he now has a weird tattoo on his left yeah, arm that was not well, there before. Yeah, and I've got a theory as to what that is. Or but, what it is. I, I, you know, I, but I, he doesn't know himself, because he doesn't remember any of it. He doesn't even remember seeing the boat in the first place. He, I will state that I remember seeing him with the captain in his mouth while he was a giant fuck-off dragon. The, but the, apart the, from that, no, 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 he picked him up from what I remember. Like he just grabbed yeah, him and saved him. How else he gonna pick him up as a dragon? Who's by his claws? His fucking talons. Did Tony say it was in his mouth? Well, do you well, think all fucking like, dragons don't have feet? He picked, <laughs> he picked him up one way or another. So here's Snickling. my theory. Here's my theory. 
if he killed the former captain of this boat, the ownership might magically transfer from captain to captain. You have to kill the captain in order to become the captain. I am the captain now. Mm, oh, he's, he's the captain now. It's a meme. Wait, okay, so, so, so question before, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, maybe he ate him. Um, go, go ahead now. So we're speaking to Nameless? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the captain that he yeah. killed, saying in quotations, is the guy of the big boat. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. The boat that we're standing on right now. Okay. Well, it makes big storm. Wait, actually, are we standing on it or not? Because Tony said that. You're, 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 all, you're all, you're all, you're all on the I, big I boat. I had to question it because of the way you worded that a second ago, Tony. You went off yeah. because of this big ass boat in front of us. No, you're all on the big boat. We're not stuck on it. Man. That's my theory. You know, the, it, you know, it's you're you're all standing on the top level of the big boat, and you're talking to the captain. There's several dead bodies all over the place because of you guys. Doing what you did, and then there's the giant pile of gold that's sitting in the middle that's worth about a hundred platinum. I loot all the bodies. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't care about anything else. I loot all the bodies. I thought I picked up all the platinum, Tona, the last episode. Not yet. No, not yet. I didn't give you time for that. We ended the session oh, before then. Don't do what I do. <laughs> all right, well, I'll you... do that. I'll pick up all the platinum while he loots that. Okay. Okay, so... I'm going to have to give a brief recap as to what just happened because our recording device quit recording after a brief period of time. So to kind of give a small recap of what just happened, our players got back on the boat. They had a conversation with the captain about uh, if the captain would be willing to work for uh, Norbit and his friends. Uh, and they gave him 25 platinum in order to do so. The captain agreed. Then Mouse looted the bodies and found several items, one of which was a, a very rare, more rare than normal, ethereal crystal, which was black in color, almost obsidian. Found several potions in which one of them was able to remove his curse of him being enlarged and turn him back to normal size. But it kept his horns, and they just shrunk with him to fit his features of his body. Found several other random items like candles and, you know, various other little trinkets and stuff. And that is actually where we left off at at that time. So we've struck the deal. They found their items. Now Norbit is going to go and inspect the inside of the ship. Pigeon is up in the crow's nest looking around to make sure that nobody else comes about and just keep a lookout. We haven't figured out what Rhaegar and Milani is going to be doing yet. And I don't right off hand remember what mouse was going to be doing so i'll let him explain that here now so mouse what were you going to do okay uh shitbag was also going to go with uh norbit just to clarify okay. sure and pigeon was looking for the captain's border yeah and then shitbag was going to be using his senses to determine if there, we had any hidden like enemies or stowaways that we didn't catch before during the during combat Okay, before I get Milani and uh, Rhaegar to tell me what they're going to do, I'm going to let you, Mouse, roll for Shitbag to see if he can figure that out. And because of him being a dog, he will get advantage on the smell check. So go ahead and roll me a perception check with advantage for Shitbag. Perception. Just and use the look. stat sheet that I gave you for him, the new one. Yeah, no, no I've always, yeah, I've been using it since I received it. Yeah, we're good. That and then now we'll go to ship bag. What was it again? Perception with advantage. Plus five on top of that. I can't remember. Did he have any other? He had advantage with it because it was. He has advantage with it because he's a dog. Hearing and smelling. Yeah, hearing and smelling. As long as it's hearing and smelling, he has advantage. Any other perception is like sight or anything, and he doesn't. So that'll be plus five. Rolling fourteen and twenty four is the one we're going with. Okay, so pretty much everybody that was on this ship was on the top deck, so you quite literally wiped out the entirety of the pirate crew itself, and there's nobody downstairs, but he does smell something odd. Oh. He, he does smell magic, which is not normal. He smells <laughs> magic? <laughs> like, he quite literally smells magic. He smells a huge magical... Like? He's, like, it's... 
he can't really pinpoint what it is, but he he gets like this really weird sense of smell that there's something very powerful in this ship, but he doesn't know power. what it is, <laughs> and he doesn't know what exactly its exact location. But there's something in here that is quite literally like making his nose like burn almost. He'll, he'll relay it back to to Norbit like something uh something powerful down here. I'm gonna use uh what the fuck is that thing? Um, Arcana check. Okay, to see if I can pinpoint the source of it. Sure. And to uh, tell you what I was gonna do real quick. Yep, go for it. Mouse is going to go check the captain's quarters. Okay, got it. All right, we got a twenty-three on the Arcana. You can feel it coming from down two floors to the bottom of the ship mm -hmm. and go towards the engine room that's where you pinpointed at i'm going to say to ship bug you keep a nose out for any anything else that's strange and i'm gonna go i'm gonna tell him where i'm heading to which is that location you just stated sure i'm gonna tell him if he find if he does a good job i will try and get him a taco he says yes sir <laughs> and he does the salute <laughs> thing to you too <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So I think I've met a friend out of fucking shit bag. Um, he's in the brain room with food. Yeah, yeah I like he's like, exactly tacos. like my car. Um, All right, I'm gonna start off with Norbit because Norbit is the most important part of this. With you going directly to that location, and then we'll go into the rest of you. But Milani and Rhaegar, you guys tell me what you're doing now. I am portioning out everybody's share of the AE5 platinum, which I've already calculated. Gotcha. Milani, what are you doing? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yes, I'm here! I exist! <laughs> here! Uh, I guess I'm just chilling. Just waiting to see what the fuck happens. I don't know. Okay. She sat there playing with a candle. Okay. She's the one throwing hey, over I the like bodies. Sense. Don't judge she's throwing, me! She's throwing over the bodies. <laughs> wait, wait. Um, Someone's gotta do it. Tony, how just big are the candles? Tossing them. Uh, just regular size candles. They're not. How big is Milani? But how many candles are there? I never got to Twelve. There's twelve. Twelve. Okay. How, bi how big is Milani? I mean, she's a giant panda. I just have this image in my head of Milani with a candle up each nostril. Just going... <laughs> the woman off really? of the fucking video. Bro. Roll a wild <laughs> candle surge? What? I mean, no. <laughs> just getting off a nut on candles. <laughs> Okay, all right, so we're going to start with Norbit. Norbit, you head down towards the engine room. Yep. The, it's kind of almost difficult to describe. It looks just like what you would imagine a giant engine in the ship to look like, except that it has a giant, almost foggy-like crystal inside embedded into the engine itself. Okay. And... That's what you see, and that's where the magic source is coming from. So, with not being a artifact, so wouldn't he already have a good idea of what the fucking engine is? Yes. Uh, so, I'm gonna assume that he can pretty safely assume that that crystal is what's powering the engine. Correct, yes. Uh, can I use identify on it? Maybe? Is that something I can do with that? Or... Sure. Okay, I will do that then. Cool. It doesn't fizzle out, but you know it didn't work because the moment you cast it, you suddenly see what looks to be like a child that's made out of a tornado appear in the middle of the room and look at you and go, what the fuck are you doing on here? I'm assuming it's... Not friendly. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, but it's looking up at you because you're taller than oh, it yeah. is. But it's literally a tiny tornado that's standing in the middle of the room. It's not, like, causing a disturbance in, like, God, yeah. the wind or anything. It's just, like, sitting there. I'm gonna, like, put my hands up and be like, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm gonna slowly walk towards him and crouch down. So I'm, like, at eye level with it all, but, like, not eye level, because even if I crouch down, I can't imagine I'd be at eye level with it. Um, but I'm going to get, like, crouched down, so I'm trying to show that I'm not trying to intimidate it or anything. I'm just going to say, well, we basically took over the ship. Uh, what are you doing here? Um, 
I'm a slave. Oh. <laughs> uh, that caught me off guard. All right. Um, I'm gonna ask what his purpose is as a slave on the ship. Then I think I already know, but that thing. And then he points to the giant crystal behind him. Ah, so you power the engine. Got ya. Um, he looks at it and says, I don't know what the fuck it is, I just know that I'm trapped here. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him, what would you do if I got you untrapped? Um, from what the captain told me, I would die. Okay, so you're not really a slave, you're here to survive. I didn't want to be here, I just found myself here because the captain trapped me. Put me inside of that fucking crystal, and then stuck me in that thing, and now I can't leave. Is Norbert intelligent enough to know if the captain had been lying to him? Um, considering he captured him, like so, he obviously was alive outside. I want to say at least with the identify spell, you know that there are crystals that have that power to where that they can entrap somebody and keep them there for all eternity. But this is a very rare case that the entity itself is allowed to uh, to leave the crystal. But not the boat, I'm guessing. But not the boat. Great. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the little tornado creature thing. I'm gonna say, well, since I uh, I basically own this boat at this point, I'm not gonna set you free because like you said, you'll die. That's obviously not in my interest. But I will try and make it comfortable for you if you keep doing whatever the fuck it is you're doing to make that thing run. Deal? Uh, he gives a thumbs up and says, deal! Sweet, uh, I would check its hand, but it's a tornado. Yeah. Great, um, I'm gonna ask it what its name is as well, if it has one. I don't have a name. Uh, how about I give you one? Sure! Oh god. Hmm. Oh god. Hey, at least he's making a name and not Tony, it could be Tornado Yay. Boy. Exactly, it'd be like Stormy or something. Um, Taz. No, 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 I'm gonna think on this. Tony, do you want to switch to someone else real quick while I think about a name for this fucker? Sure. Go for it. Mouse? You said you want to go to the captain's quarters, right? Oh, oh, I thought you were gonna go to shitbag. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, I sure do. Alright. It's on the second floor. Oh, I thought it'd be up top, like right underneath it, where Typically, the... normally it is, but in this case, because of the way that the captain worked with the ship, with the tattoo, they wanted to keep him somewhere more secure, so they put him on the second floor. But yeah, okay. so you're on the second floor. It's a complete mess. He was a filthy motherfucker. There's trash everywhere. There's porn magazines everywhere. There's, like, it, it, this is your typical, like, nasty-ass motherfucker room. This is nowhere near as nice and neat as uh, the other captains. Is it nasty or cluttered? There's a difference. It's extremely cluttered. He's a hoarder, then? Mm, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Basically. Um, what am I looking at, then? Like, what are the items piled up in every fucking inch of this place? Mostly trash. Like, beer bottles, magazines. Okay. Follow the name, by the way. You're gonna love it. Gosh. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> beer bottles, magazines. What kind of magazines? Porn magazines. Oh, very bad. Okay, gotcha. Um, what else? Just trash in general. Gotcha. Um, is there a like? It any... actually really stinks in here too. It smells Sweet. like shit. Uh, I'm sure there's a window. <laughs> <laughs> there is a window. Yeah. I'll open the window first. Okay. Oh my god, fucking... <gasps> <laughs> Taking my head out the window. <gasps> Taking a deep breath and returning back to the quarters. Um, the captain's quarters. Um, can Does he have like a desk or a bed or any like kind of... There is a desk there. Right, right. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to search the desk and pile up all the trash. Oh man, this will probably get me in trouble. Um... Oh my god. Nah, nah. I, I was thinking about throwing it out the window, but nah, let's not let's not pollute the sea. Let's be better. Um, let us <laughs> pile all the trash outside the window. I'm cleaning this motherfucker's room out. I'm calling dibs. Okay. There's another captain's quarters, bitch. 
<laughs> it was only the captain's quarters because he preferred this location. Wherever you prefer, uh, I got here first. Rule of dibs, man. I can't argue with that. <laughs> Roll me a perception check, though. As I'm cleaning and everything? As you're cleaning the desk, specifically. Yeah. Specifically, let me tell you first what I'm actually looking for as well. Like, what's in my mind? I'm actually looking for his journal and his log for their yeah. travels. Yeah. Tony, yeah. wouldn't he need a performance check, too, to see if he cleans it well? <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. But roll me a perception check. Gotcha. I fail. This is going to be upset. 18. Okay, you do see what looks to be like a journal. Mm, interesting, interesting. Um, I continue. I... I put it in my in my pouch to read as soon as I get done because I'm not going to, yeah. Um, I get rid of all the trash. I'm trying okay. to get rid of the bed. What would I make you roll to determine if you clean this room properly or not? Um, I've got I've I medicine. Idea. What? Um, I would have said survival. <laughs> survival. I don't think it's that bad. Germs, bacteria. Sounds like medicine to me. We don't know it's that bad. Performance or could be one. I'm definitely getting rid of that bed. I'm going to make me a hammock. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't think any of these skills pertain to any of that philosophy. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to make you roll a... Almost like you're rolling a wisdom saving throw, so like a wisdom check. A so, wisdom, okay. Um, and we'll go from well, there. Constitution, will constitution work? A check? Actually, yeah, that sounds better. Roll constitution check, because you're using physical... Either one will work for me. I'm just... You know, you're using your physical actions to go in yeah. and clean a room. So constitution, yeah. Roll me a constitution check. Okay. I hardly got anything it's too heavy. Uh, Tony, you're going to be right. proud of my name, by the way. Like, you're very um, proud. Okay. Also, can I yell for Milani to bring me a fucking candle? No. <laughs> my candle. Okay. Yeah, you can kidding. do 14. I can, uh, I 14. Can you, you clean it up, but there's still something in here that smells really fucking bad. Oh, God. It's mouse. Shit bag! <laughs> Call for shit bag. Shit bag's busy. Instantly, shit bag appears and like, yes. What can I do for you? Find the smell. Busy. Uh, Find the smell. Roll me a perception check with advantage. <laughs> it was plus five. Twenty-four. Again. There is a compartment in the back corner of the room that quite literally is a toilet that's overfilled with shit. Oh god, there's a fucking outhouse in this fucking room. Yeah. <laughs> Not even outhouse, it's a fuck oh god. Oh no. This is going to take everything I have to clean. <laughs> I must get to work. I should <laughs> take a piece of cloth or something that's clean. Do I have a, at least have a clean cloth from somewhere on the ship that I can get? You can take a top off of one of the bodies. Yeah, I was fixing to say, you could take something off one of the bodies and then Sounds use that Sounds good to me. To uh, I'll just cover work. my face and just kind of, yes, try to clean that bitch. Um, yeah, yeah. What does Shitbag have? Um, he has spicy, 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 plain umami. Um, okay, most of the like bad stuff, I will shovel out the fucking window. <laughs> okay. Um, and whatever's left from the toilet, like, we're gonna s clean this nicely. I'm guessing it's clogged. It, it, it's badly clogged. Okay, well, I'm going to sit shitbag on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, in it, just, like, shove him on it. I was like, I'm sorry, my friend. <laughs> I need you now. <laughs> yeah, like, he's like, he's like, what, what are you doing? I don't like this <laughs> sensation. Why are you picking me up? Are you going to pet um... me? Are you... Why are you sitting me on this giant bowl? I don't Transmutation. understand. Transmutation. Transmutation. Um, what is, uh... Okay, I gotta see if I can do a transmutation. Hold on. Uh, shitbag's Preta. Transmutation is bitter. Oh, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, let me see what else he has. Because he's gonna use God. <laughs> um, God, uh... Mold, mold work, right? Is 
Um, <laughs> like a mini explosion. Nah, that, would, that would be that would be Chernobyl, and we would be dead. Fireball. <laughs> the boat just starts sinking. Uh, um, bless, bless this toilet. <laughs> yes. Sneak <laughs> kind of Oh God! Absorb elements. Oh God! I don't that think could I have work. Else. That could work. Do you want to absorb that smell? Oh, I mean, a shit bag. Hey, Does that hey, even count? hey, Tony, here's a little bit of math for you. How many times would he have to cast Prestidigitation oh. in order to counteract that smell? Oh, it's... wait, 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 wait. I've got it. I've got it. Oh, please tell me I have that. Oh, that's got to have. Yes, yes. I'm going to do a conjuration of uh, of infestation. Maybe there's something that'll eat through it all. Okay. Like, because it says cloud of okay. mites, fleas, and other parasites to appear momentarily. Dung beetle. Will that work? Cool. Roll me a 1d4. 1d4. Of on the f- oh god oh no <laughs> sort of direction yep it's gonna go right up on the ceiling well no I have shit bag butt first in the toilet I'm holding him there gonna go up shit bag yep oh shit bag's gonna right. go flying up with a yelp roll a one d four oh god here we go here we go oh god how 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 do we determine south though oh shit i've already determined it okay 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 three three so <laughs> east you watch as the toilet shoots to the right of the room and goes out the ship and now you have a giant hole in the wall and can see out into the ocean i try it again <laughs> no the toilet's gone the toilet's gone oh the toilet's gone so you oh. shot an infestation at the toilet and targeted it. So the toilet was the target. Shut the up. toilet shot east and then went straight out the fucking ship. And there's now a giant hole in the shape of the toilet right across from where your bed would be. Hey, at least you got proper yeah. ventilation there. That smell's not going to be there for very long. Smell's True. gone. Um, toilet is gone. I don't think we could save the toilet anyway. Um, <laughs> so now I got a hole for where the toilet should have been. Well, I'm thinking Correct. like... No, but Mandy. Oh, that worked. Yeah, that problem. Yeah, there's a giant hole in the floor that yeah, leads. It, it would, but I'm down in the hole speaking to a little tornado. All oh, right, I'll get him to do that later. I'm going to um, <laughs> to uh, just shut the door on the on it, and it's like I'll do it later. I mean, the smell's gone, so that's yeah, the that, good yeah. No, I closed it. Yeah, I closed it, and I'm like, that deal with that later. Wait, I have a very important question. Yeah, sure. Where's shit bag? Because he was on that toilet. Oh, he's still there. Okay. I'm holding him. Yeah. Okay, so the way that, the way that it works I will is... say that the panic on his face when the toilet shot from underneath his ass out the fucking wall, he, he looks like one of the cartoon characters. Wait, how does... Okay, okay. so how does the, the toilet move, though? The toilet's an inanimate object. Yeah, because you shot something at it, basically. Well, no, okay, so... So the, the the infestation it shoots the thing that only that moves is if you target a creature. The toilet might as well have been a creature in this situation. <laughs> it was because I thought it was hilarious. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna allow this yeah. bullshit. Well, I was just trying. Yeah, I was just trying to summon fucking like <laughs> some kind of like m- like shit eating mite or something. Like some kind yeah, of dung beetle of some kind. Yeah, I mean you did that. That's why the, yeah, the like that's why the smell is gone. Yeah, everything's gone, including the toilet itself. <laughs> yeah. All right, sounds good to me. I'm fine with that. Oh God, um, I so the smell's gone. That was the only problem with the smell. I will get rid of the bed too. I'm going to place oh. a hammock in there. I have made it my home, away from home. Okay, cool. You do that. I will now read the journal. Okay, you open the journal. It's a list of names. Oh, and. You skimmer through it, and it's alphabeticalized, and you see the name Chroma appear in where the C section would be. Oh, you motherfucker! Hmm. Interesting, interesting. It's a list of names. Have I, can I determine what, what the list of names could possibly be? Uh, it doesn't really tell you. It's just a, a book of names. So there's there's no log about the captain. I have an idea. So it's just a log book. Gotcha. There's no journal from the captain or anything on there. Roll insight on it. I mean, I could, but I mean, you could roll insight or history. That's I up to roll, you. I I feel like a pass passive perception would work instead. 
the the perception is only to see what's in the book to yeah. physically see. I know, so like, if I'm, like skimming, if I'm like skimming, skimming through it, trying to find like anything on the captain that was originally owner of the ship. Now, if you want to skim through it and try to find something else, then that would yeah. be your passive perception. But I, that's why I gave you the chroma thing is because your passive perception was high enough oh, okay. to notice that. Would that not be investigation, Tony? Not not always. It's because of the way that he worded that he wants to look through the journal is the reason that I use perception. I'm trying to find more on the captain, so I'm going to roll up. But now now that he's looking through it in the way that he stated after he's he's opened the book, then yes, it would be investigation. Investigation. But, however, if he's wanting to do the thing to see what the, the names mean, that would be insight. I'll deal with the names later. I, I want to find more on the captain. Okay. All right. So investigation. That would be investigation. Let's see, guys. An eight. Mm, yeah, you don't really find anything. It's just names. Hmm. I'll deal with this later. I'll put the book back in my bag, and that's my turn. Okay. All right. Shitbag is in the room with Mouse, and he's still got that terrified face looking about. Uh, we've got. Cool. Rhaegar and Milani, that will be up next, but I want Norbit to go ahead and give me the name at least. Aeolus. Huh? What? Was the divine keeper of the winds. Nani? Ooh. He kept the violent storm winds locked safely away inside the cavernous interior of his isles, releasing them only at the command of the greatest gods to wreak devastation upon the world. Aeolus. Fucking hell. cool. He took something seriously for a change. I nice. fucking like naming shit. Okay, I'm 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 impressed. Oh, wait, what did you hey, name? Hey, hey, hey Norbert, yes. I might need I might need to employ you for uh, for duckies and dargons. <laughs> hey, you're all good, but <laughs> I can name anything anytime. I uh, I'm impressed. I'm gonna look down the little guy. And I'm gonna go. I will name you Aeolus because mind you, this is different law for like fucking somewhere else. But um, yeah, get tell him that his name's Aeolus. It means the divine keeper of the winds. And I want to see how he reacts to that. He actually does something you didn't expect. Which is... He fizzles out. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, he grows a little bit bigger. He gets power with names. Where have I heard that from? <laughs> that's like, that's, like, that's uh, that time I reincarnated it as a slime. <laughs> Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> so, how big is he now? He's about the size. So like, he was originally the size of a toddler. Now he's yep. about the size of like, roughly like an eight to ten year yeah. old. Great. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at him and go. I'm glad you're happy with the name. I will be right back. I'm gonna start heading back up to the top of the ship. God, it's gonna get bigger. Yeah, probably. All right. Milani and Rhaegar. Yes. What do you guys want to do? Um, I guess I'll go find out what Mouse and what's his face are doing, like what everybody's doing, since I'm not doing anything. Okay, so you walk by to see Mouse cleaning a room that smells completely like shit. You walk by just in time to see the toilet shoot out of the fucking wall, but Mouse doesn't notice you. You walk past Norbit as he's making his way back up topside. And Norbit, do you want to mention anything to Milani about what's down there? I'm just going to stay. Uh, I'm in a little wind buddy down there. Got away, Lus. Very chill. Uh, don't recommend going to speak to him. He's a bit of an ass. That's all I'm going to say. All right. I'm going to try and keep him a secret. He's mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's about all you see down there, Milani, unless you want to go and meet the 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 wind child. Sure. Okay, you get down there, and uh, you see basically the same thing Norbit saw. You see a giant engine with a, a massive ether crystal embedded into the engine itself. The little wind child pops up. It's about the size of, like, roughly an 8- to 10-year-old child. It looks at you and goes, well, now who the fuck are you? Rude? You're rude coming into my room like that. You could have at least knocked first. I'm exploring. Well, I mean, couldn't you explore by knocking on my door first? I could at least let you in that way. If I barging into my room, I could have been doing anything. If I knew somebody was in here, I would have knocked, but I didn't think anybody was in here. 
Ah, whatever. Okay, well, is there something that you want? No, I'm just looking. Ah, okay. Well, here it is. Engine room. Ta-da! <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> It does not like you. <laughs> it actually doesn't like anybody. It's meant to be an asshole. The way he said it, though. ta -da. Yeah, he's an ass. <laughs> he's quite <laughs> literally designed to be an asshole. Do they eat anything? Nope. Oh, great. He is quite literally just a child made out of wind. Great. So he literally is, he acts like a child because he is a child. Yeah. Okay. But he's Poor a kid. dick of a child. He's like the the worst of a child. He's a fucking brat. He's a brat. Oh. Is there anything else you want me to show you? No. <laughs> get him, Milani. Get him. Get him. You you know how to do this. Come on, get him. He's like, well, okay, then. You can go fuck her off, then. I don't have to fuck her Bye. off. Bye. Later. Have a nice day. Why are you still here? Not going anywhere if I don't have to. Thank you very much. Ah, fine. Stuck with me. And he goes back to his crystal. He flicks you off on his way in, though. Huh. Suck it up, Buttercup. Yeah. So, what do you want to look for in this engine room? Um, just anything. See if anything's unusual. It, honestly, it's. It's pretty simplistic to you in the sense that you're not familiar with the mechanics of how the engine works. The only one here that is familiar with that is Norbit because of his his class, per se. But it is very unique. just Almost just as unique to see a crystal this size in a ship like this. Just as unique as the black ethereal crystal that Mouse found. Because... Again, ethereal is the rarest substance on the planet, and the fact that you found one this size, when the only people that have seen one bigger than this is the people who were originally from Kathna or your party members who went to Kathna and saw the, the capital city before it got destroyed, those were the biggest crystals in existence in this plane. But to see one this size is... A, almost a treat but you know that the wind thing lives inside of this crystal because you act, quite literally saw this thing go, go back zoop. In. yeah okay um i guess that's it okay all right uh Rhaegar. okay before before we go into this one platinum is a hundred gold right yes sir you have a fuck ton of money that's all i'm saying Okay, so uh, I'm on the deck of the ship, um, just taking into account all the gold pieces that are on there from the loot and the loot that was obtained through mouse uh, rifling through the bodies and shit like that. Sure. So sure. whilst everybody's going about their their thing, I'm splitting it into four equal portions or four equal piles. Um, so everybody can mark down that they've got an extra 2,125 gold. There's a section for platinum. Yeah, yeah, but how many merchants are we going to come across that want one platinum for a thing? I mean, yeah. How much oh, can we break it down what? somewhere? It's okay. There's a, there's a way to break it down. So it's okay. 25. Um, I'll just take the platinum. How many platinum pieces was it? Uh, 21.25. Each of us got 21.25. Platinum, so, yeah. So 21 platinum, and then that 0.25 would be how much gold? 250 gold. Okay, so that'll give me... Okay, okay. Two, that's 250, so... Oh, that's not bad. Right. Okay. I've got okay. a total of 2,210 gold, which would be 22 platinum, 10 gold, correct? Uh, Probably, yeah. Just double-checking that, because... Figured, why the fuck not? Yeah, I'm going with 21 platinum. I have 430 gold, um, 895 silver pieces, and five copper pieces. Okay. That's cool. my... Yeah. Okay. All right. So you've all done that. After yep. that's done, I want to go and search for mice. Okay. You find them on the, the second floor, and you, you didn't see the toilet shoot out, but you see him laying in a hammock. 
Is he looking through the journal at that point? He is about that point of putting the journal away into his bag. Hey, what do you got there, buddy? Uh, at least the names. I mean, maybe you can look at it and figure it out. I can't. I mean, it's just names to me, but yeah. I pass it back. I pass it to uh, Rhaegar. Okay. Uh, what would I What would I have to roll in order to determine more detail about this, Tony? You would have to, if you're doing the, the notion of what the names mean, it would be insight. If you're looking for the information on the captain, it would be investigation. Can I do both separately? That's up to you, but yes, essentially, yes, you can. Okay, for the insight, that was a 13. Okay. And for the investigation, that's an 18. Okay. So we're going to start with the investigation first. The captain was very secretive, so he didn't leave any information in this journal about himself. But he did leave a little bit about what's on the next island. So the island that you're going to is surrounded by a giant storm. The wind elemental that's in the ship is how you're going to get through that storm without taking damage. Okay. Okay. So basically, it's almost like the wind elemental cancels it out and allows you to traverse the storm, th that specific storm, without needing the any outside help, basically. Okay. Okay. Now for the insight check... You kind of get the notion that because it mentions Chroma specifically in the list of names, that this is a list of slaves that these pirates may have captured and sent to that island. Okay. Um, it's not... There's, and I'll go ahead and tell you now, there's roughly, in the equivalent of the amount of names that's in the book, there's a roughly about... 3,500 names. It's it's not the poachers, is it? You don't know that. You didn't roll high enough for that. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm going to relay that to Mouse, and I'm going to hand, yeah. him the, hand him the journal back. Okay. Mouse, do you do anything with the journal? All right, yeah, I'll take it back and put it back in my um in my bag. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say Norbit, you yes. roughly come right at that time that he puts the book back into his bag. All right. Um, can I ask if anyone's seen the, uh, Nameless? Nameless is still up topside. I would like to go speak. Uh, actually, first I'm gonna see the- do I see the hole in the wall? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, can you fix my- can you fix my wall, bro? Yeah, sure. What, the door was what? closed, so he couldn't- he couldn't actually see it. The door- I actually closed the door on the bathroom. So I have to show it to him. I'll- when- when he shows it to me, I'm gonna go, why is it like a toilet? You've got two holes, essentially. You've got a hole that's in behind the wall that's, like, in a secret compartment that the toilet was at. So you've got that hole. Then you've got a hole that you can see as clear as day that's a massive hole right oh. next to the bed that leads out into the ocean. So you can, like, peek through the hole and see the ocean through that hole. I'm gonna ask why it looks like a toilet. Uh, because it is a toilet? Oh. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, I'll use mending to fix it. Do you use it on both holes? Sure. Okay. Use it on both I, holes? That's a weird yeah. sentence. So yeah. both of the holes close in and fix themselves and repair themselves, so there's no longer a hole in either one of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would like to then go speak to Nameless. Okay. All right. All right. You go and do that. Uh, does anybody here want to do anything before we go to Norbit speaking to Nameless? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Norbit. Yep. You go and find Nameless up topside. He's basically looking around the ship and looking to see all the the stuff that he needs to look at up topside to control this new ship. I'm going to tell him he needs to come with me a second down to go to the hull. And as I'm walking down with him, uh, I would, I'm going to explain to him that there is a wind creature down there that appears to be essential to the ship. Okay. Uh, uh, he says, sure. Cool. Uh, and he walks down there with you. You guys I, get down there. I knock on the door before we end up. The, you hear a voice say, finally, somebody with manners. Come on in. Uh, so I go, Aeolus, hey, uh, this is the person that's going to be driving the boat from now on. Do you know anything about this mark? 
Uh, as soon as you mention the mark, he looks and sees on the arm and he says, fuck. Uh, he kind of whispers it a little bit and then you see him kneel. And he just has his head down low and he's he's kneeling to the captain. I'm going to tell him to stand. I'm going to say, oh, well, let's stand up. Uh, he doesn't stand. I'm going to tell the captain to ask him if he knows anything about the mark. He says, dude, I don't have a clue. As soon as he says, I don't have a clue, uh, Aeolus, he doesn't hold his head up or anything. He says, would you like me to explain the mark master? And then the captain replies, I mean, that would benefit me greatly, yes. You see Aeolus stand back up and look at him specifically and completely ignore you as if you do not exist at all. Mm -hmm. He looks at the captain and says, the marking on your arm indicates that you own me and I have to obey all of your orders. I cannot reject anything that you give me. In fact, your orders can be as simplistic as you tell me to kill him and he points to you. I have to kill him. But I cannot do anything without your orders first. But my main function is to basically run this engine and make your ship faster. That's primarily what the previous captain did. But I can't do anything on my own without you. That mark signifies that. Does he respond to that? He looks, he goes, well... Can you at least tell me how I got this mark? Because I don't remember anything. He said, is the captain's body, the previous captain, anywhere near us? He said, we haven't found his body, no. He's like, then you had to have killed him to get, receive that mark. So you've done something to kill him. And the captain himself, with that mark, you become immortal. And you will stay until somebody kills you. That, that's the curse of the mark. You never will die because you're connected to my power. And as an elemental, I never age. And until somebody kills you or you die of a unnatural cause, then the marking can't be removed or passed on to anybody until that time happens. Hmm. Uh, the captain, he's like... Well, shit. I didn't expect that today. What do you want me to do, Norbit? I mean, technically you're immortal. Now, the first thing I've got to ask is, is that something you want? To be fair, I was already given a long life because of my Patreon and their ability to give me a longer life, but now that I'm immortal, I, I mean, I don't know what to do. I'll work for you, essentially, so there's nothing else I can do. Yeah. I'm going to turn around and stay. As far as working for me goes, that is true. But I want you to see this as, as an alliance as well. Uh, I want to stay that to him, and I will, I will offer him, if there is a way I can bring you back from the dad, do you want me to take that curse? Uh, he, the air elemental says that's not how it works. Well, he said if I kill him. Yeah, uh, yeah. so the reason you haven't found the captain's body is because his body disintegrated. There's nothing left. Once you kill the host, the host becomes nothing. It quite literally becomes part of the wind. And the, the wind becomes the tattoo. So if the tattoo itself has the remaining souls of those previous to him. Oh, yeah. So the captain is inside the tattoo. So if you kill him... He disintegrates. He disintegrates, and he become, he goes inside of you into the tattoo. Right. That's, that's how the tattoo is transferred. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll, make, I'll give the captain an offer. When he wants it to be over, I will make sure that is done. If he wants that. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Because again, my Patreon gave me a long life anyway. I'm, I'm only like 
in my early 30s. Oh, yeah, I'm not planning on this. According to my Patreon, I was going to live for thousands of years. So now that I'm immortal, I might as well just take it as I go. And if something were to happen to where that I, I just don't want to live anymore, then sure, we'll go with that. Yep. I would like him to, I would also tell him, again, you can tell, uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to call it L I will for now because it's easier. Fucking, yeah. I'm going to say, since he listens to you and you technically listen to me, I just want you to run this ship and make sure it works. Make sure we're going in the right way that we want to go. That's all I need from you. I wanted to try and figure out what the mark was. I couldn't explain it without you being there. Now you know. Sure. Let's head back up. We'll keep this between me and you. We don't want everyone else finding out specifically talking about his crew i'm gonna let milani mouse and Rega know about that okay and we'll keep running like that but for now just act like this never happened okay all right so we're gonna kind of move this along a little bit we're gonna say that that took a vast majority of the day of having all of that done you guys will get the benefits of a long rest for the 24 hours. Rhaegar, you're in charge of the rolls, but in the sense of the ship itself, I'm giving the ship control to Milani for now. But essentially, just know that I, as the DM, have full control of the ship, and nobody else can have control of it because of the way the ship works. So... I need you to roll me a 1d20 to determine if you go into an encounter. I'm going to roll mine for that daily thing. Sure. 16. Uh, clear skies. Nothing happens. Okay. Roll again. That's the first day. You've got three more to go. 12. You do get an encounter. Oh, God. Roll me a d10. Nine. Okay. Oh, by the way, I need to eat real quick, Tony, for a shit bag. You let him make this last roll, and I'll tell you what happens. And then during that time, do I need to do it time of day as well? Depending on what you roll for this, yes. Okay, so I need you to roll me a d10 again and tell me what you get. One. You're lost. I'm going to go ahead and give you the time of the day. The day is afternoon. You are lost. You don't know where you're currently located at. You've somehow gone off course. So here's how it's going to work. Somebody now is going to roll a wisdom check for the entire party. The DC is go you're going to roll with the modifiers of everybody's wisdom checks. So Everybody here, give whoever's going to make the roll their modifier for wisdom. Somebody's going to make the roll. The DC is 30. Okay. Norbert, what's your wisdom modifier? Four. Four. Milani. Three. That's seven. Mouse. Four. Just a left does the pigeon in shit bags? And then shit bags is two. Wait, hold on. Tony, are we counting shit bag and Yes. Yeah. Technically he's a character, so yes, he has his own stats. Okay, so that's thirteen. What's uh what's uh what's pigeons? Doesn't have one, it's plus zero. Yeah. Huh. Okay, huh. So thirteen plus mine. So I need a sixteen or higher, basically. So yeah, you need to roll a sixteen or higher in order to get back on track. And if you fail, then I'll tell you what happens. That's a 22 total. 22? Okay. You're going to roll a d10 again, and it's going to it's going to be pretty bad. Three. Three? Norbit's immune to this. Immune? Norbit is the only one on the entire ship that's immune to it, other than Pigeon. Because they're mechanical or what? Because he's, he's mechanical, yes. Poison um, or but, exhaustion oh, or charm? No, we're going to starve. No, no it, well, it's either poison, exhaustion, or charm. No, it's actually something different. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Sirens. Oh. We get to be sung. 
too. Yes. Uh, Norbit's the only one immune to this. So Norbit, what you see is that in the distance you see what looks to be like a giant rock, and on that rock there are these. It's various different types. There's male and female versions of them. Yep. But they're they're sirens. To you, they look hideous. They look grotesque. All right. It would be almost like it'd be like Resident Evil zombie type kind of grotesque, right? Okay. To everyone else on this ship, you all automatically fail. And you see on the same rock what looks to be, like, these beautiful, like, majestic-looking beings, and you're drawn to them. You, your sole purpose now is to try and take the ship directly to that rock. Norbit, what do you do? You're the only one immune, so you're the only one that can do anything about it. I immediately run to where the captain stood on the wheel the captain is at the helm and he's he's turning the ship towards that rock i immediately while like while he's still on hold of it i grab his hands that are on the on the wheel and i spin them the other way he attacks you that's fine matter of fact i need milani mouse Rhaegar, and shitbag to all roll perception checks to see if you notice that norbit's trying to keep you guys from going in that direction because if you pass and seeing him you're going to want to attack him automatically. That's an eight. Okay, you don't see Norbit doing it. 16. You see Norbit doing it. Uh, 28. 28? Okay, you notice Norbit trying to do it. Roll for shitbag. 16. 16? Okay, he notices it too. So, Rhaegar, you're the only one that's too enthralled with the sirens, so you're not going to pay attention to anybody else. But Mouse, Milani, and Shitbag, the three of you are going to notice Norbit trying to direct the ship in the opposite direction of where the rock is at. You three are going to want to attack Norbit specifically. Can, can I do something as they because they've seen me? I'm about to attack you first, and then as soon as I attack you to see if I hit, then you can do something. So, yes. Got you, that's fine. I do right. fail. I, I rolled a two, so I'm trying to elbow you and yep. knock you in the face, but you've got my arms clamped down too hard, and I can't move to where I can hit you. So, yep. Norbit, this is your chance to do something before I make you all roll initiative against one another. I'm aware that I'm going to have to me make sure that he lets go of one of his hands. Like, I'm going to have to let go of one of his hands, but I'm going to throw the potion of slipperiness down. Where specifically? Between me and them three. Okay. All right. Rhaegar's the only one that will not be a part of this combat because he's too enthralled with the sirens. But Mouse, Milani, and Shitbag, you're all going to roll initiative against Norbit. And Norbit, you're going to roll initiative. And you and Pigeon are going to fight them three. Got it's, it's literally, I, I, I know I do this every time we fucking do this, but it's just add the initiative, right? Yeah. Add the 1d20 plus your initiative. Okay, mine's 15. I got an 18. Mouse got 11. Mouse has 11. Shitbag got 22. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this map, just because this is the only, only way that I can add you guys to the initiative, I'm going to throw your tokens in the middle of the ocean, basically. That's fine. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to move around or anything. You can use the map as like a god if you want to, to kind of mm -hmm. determine where on the boat you would like to move. So kind of just mentally imagine it, I guess. That's fine, yeah. Uh, Milani, uh, Mouse, Norbit, uh, Shitbag, and Pigeon. Where's Pigeon? Well, may have, like, on my yeah, Pigeon's, on, Pigeon's immune uh, to yeah. it, so he's, he's with you. Oh, yeah. He's, no, he's going to help you against the three of them. Yep. Okay, so it goes in order of Shitbag, Norbit, Milani, and Mouse. Okay, now I'm going to tell you how this works. Milani, Mouse, Shitbag, all of you have disadvantage on all of your attack rolls, including spells, because you are enthralled by the Siren's Call. So anytime that you try to attack Norbit, you automatically get disadvantage because you're going to be primarily focused on the, the Song of the Siren. But Norbit, you have advantage because of is, this. 
Is the captain not also trying to fight? The captain is going to try to steer the boat towards the rock. So you're yeah, yeah. going to be on a timer. All right. You're going to try to figure out how to get everybody to back into their senses before mm -hmm. the captain reaches the rock. And I'm going to tell you exactly how close they are after each round. Got you. What you can do is put a big rock on our... <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I, I got a I got a plan about this, and it's either gonna work or it's not. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. Shitbag. Yo yo yo. It is shitbag's turn, Mouse. So you have disadvantage okay. for everybody except for Norbit and Pigeon. They have advantage on all of their attacks. So what do you do? Okay. Um, it is slippery okay. terrain, correct? Yes. So you will be walking in difficult terrain. Delete one of these spices real quick. Got to do that. Oh, oh, what did no? Uh, what did he eat the first day? Three. Do I just roll. I can't. A, a D eight. Yeah, you roll to determine what he ate. Three times, right? Three different meals. Three different meals. Yes. Six, which is. Go ahead and add a fourth because this is the afternoon and at the start of the afternoon, so it'd be breakfast that he would have already ate too. So roll four times. So sour. Second roll. Another six. That's another sour. Then third roll, one which is which is sweet. And then the fourth one is seven, which is umami. Okay, how do we got that? All right, let me save it real quick. All right, and then shitbag stuff. Let's see. All right, um, I'm going to try to blind Norbit. Okay. Ship bag. Uh, blind if in a foe. Choose one creature that you can see within range to make Constitution saving throw. If it fails, the target is either blinded or deafened. Your choice for the duration at the end of each of its turns. The target can make a Constitution saving throw. On success, the spell ends. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot, here, blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, it's a level two spell. So okay, okay, all right. So you're gonna roll on the uh, wild shit surge. Oh, when you using a third, using a spell slot level third level or higher, can I use a third level? You can go higher if you want to increase the the potency of it. Yes. Yeah, for both of them to blind both of them. To blind both of them. Okay. All right. So you are at two in the last session. So add three to the roll. So you need to roll a one d twenty, and if you roll below a five then uh you have to roll the wild shit surge 11. okay you're good it's still at a five though norbit you're gonna roll a constitution saving throw for both you and pigeon and you have to beat shitbag spell dc all right uh do i get advantage on these still or and it's not an attack it's like um it's like an effect so this is just normal roll that one was for me. I got 16. Okay. And Pigeon's constitution is a plus two. Pigeon got a 14. Okay. Do any of those pass? He said 15 or 14? 16 for Norbit and 14 for... Um, What am I comparing it to? Because I don't even... Shitbag spell DC. Spell DC, which Spell is... save DC. Norbit passed. Pigeon failed. Okay, so... So it's a 15, like mine, then. Okay, so Pigeon is blinded. Yep. Okay. I don't know what it means or does, but yep. I'll uh, I'll pull up the stats for it for that, but uh, that's what happens to Pigeon. All right. Does Shitbag do anything else? Um, I think he only gets one attack per turn anyway, so I don't think he gets. Yeah, he only gets one. So um, you're in difficult terrain too. So if you move, you move half your speed. No, I'm not gonna move. I'm just gonna sit here. Okay. A blinded creature can't see and automatically fails any ability checks that require sight. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage, but in this case, it's just a regular roll against Pigeon because of their condition. And the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage, so Pigeon just attacks normal because he loses the advantage. Okay. All right. Norbit, it's your turn. Yeah, I'm just... Your, your goal is to... Survive. Find something to do to get them to where they can't hear the the song anymore. Which, at the minute, the only thing I've got like can really do that is either knock them out or get the boat away. It, it's um, completely up to you. 
So I'm going to go the route of getting the boat away. So I'm going to keep hold of the, the captain, basically, and keep him steering the opposite way. Okay. I, I was going to say, but I'm going to use Warden Bond on Pigeon. Okay. Which gives Pigeon a plus one AC, uh, bonus AC. This lasts an hour. Okay. All right. Um, I also took the same damage that he will. Okay. You take Got the same it. amount of damage. The spell ends if you drop to zero points or if the target becomes separated by more than 60 feet. Yeah. So I would like to use Warden Bond on Pigeon so he gets a plus one AC. Okay. I would also like to hold a reaction for myself. And I need you to roll me a strength check to see if you can manage to keep the boat boat turned in the opposite direction. That is fine. I'm gonna roll a contested strength roll yeah. against you though. Uh, I've gotta find my strength real quick. Uh, I've, okay, already, I've already I've already failed. I've already failed. Your bonus is higher higher than what I can My strength's only a plus one. Oh is it? Okay, then never mind. Go ahead and roll then. I did, I got a seventeen. <laughs> yeah, you definitely passed. Um so I would like to yeah, use warding bond, hold a reaction for me and can I also get Pigeon to hold his thing you can get him to hold a reaction but it's a matter of that i'm gonna make you roll for it when they try to to try attack you because they well they already have it's the deflect attack so that's more to benefit him because now they just get normal attacks on him if they get if they do the deflect attack then he gets that disadvantage okay what i'll do in compensation for that is i'll make pigeon roll a dexterity saving throw to see if his reflect attack is successful because he's blinded sure sure yeah um and for me i'm gonna hold a reaction so okay all right it's your turn um i'll just shoot him with my crossbow okay I'm close enough, right? roll to see if you hit with disadvantage so take the lowest number it's 1d20 plus the attack bonus of the crossbow is she shooting me or pigeon though I think she said she's shooting you. Yeah. Got it. off on. Okay. Roll your attack twice, and you take the lower of the two. <laughs> 25 both times. She got a crit twice. What's my AC at, Tony? Did we say we're at 21 or 22? You're at 21. Got it. Um, plus my, what's shield, Gimme? Because that might still mess. It gives you plus five, so it'd be 26. Yeah, that'd be on 26. Yeah, so even with the crit, you still miss. Okay. My AC is just too good. <laughs> but to compensate for the crit, even with the miss, Norbit, on your next turn, she shoots it in a way to where it lodges into the, the, the helm, the steering column. You're mm -hmm. going to have disadvantage on your next strength roll against the captain. Uh, that was my turn, right? Th that's up to you. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you only have one attack? No, I, well, I, I, I think I have two. Yeah, I have two, but I'll then hold Then you the... can, you can go again if you want. No, I'll hold it. Okay. All right. Mouse, it's your turn, buddy. Here we go. You have disadvantage, <sighs> so keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Mouse is going to shoot at Pigeon. Okay. <laughs> Bastard. Um, uh, let's see. I fucking knew you would as well. I knew you'd go for the fucking lower AC. Yeah. Uh, critical fail. Ooh. I already know it's going to fail, so there's no reason for me to roll again. There's no, no okay. So, no. <laughs> you rolled a nat one. Yeah. Okay. That's a fucking nasty bonus, though. I've just noticed that shit plus nine. Okay. Yeah. You're lucky, too, that, that I rolled bad on my first one. Yeah. I want you to roll damage. Roll roll your damage as if you crit. Gotcha. Um. So add all of your modifier, your your damage rolls, as if you just got a nat 20. Fucking I'll even know about it. I've an odd time fucking 12 damage. No, add an extra 3 D10 to oh. that. As gotcha. if you just got a nat 20. Oh, that's right, right, that's right, you did say that. 42. Now add 2d6 for the lightning damage. 2d6. Even Norbert would have an hard time fucking defending against your shot with a plus 9, though, fuck. 7, so 49. Okay. You shoot the captain. Oh, shit. He does get out of it. The captain no longer is swayed by the sounds of the siren. He looks Wait, to you, Norbert. does the Norbert's... loud sound of my shot do anything to that? 
Um, not, I think it's the electric law factor. Though. It was the it was the the hit, the fact that you damaged him with enough no, damage. Oh, well, to I was talking about it. for everybody else. I wasn't sure if the so sound of my gunfire was loud enough to kind of kick everybody out of the. I. Rent. You know what? Well, no. If if you hadn't rolled a nat one, that would have been one thing. But you rolled a nat one, so I'm gonna say no. Gotcha. But the captain does get out of it, and he takes a shit ton of damage, and he looks to you, Norman's like, "What the fuck is going on, guy?" I quickly explain. Uh, do I know what sirens are? Uh, not right offhand, but you you kind of get the general idea as to what they're doing. All right. Uh, I'll quickly explain. Fish creatures sing. You lot go fucking insane. You do that again, I'll fucking kill you. Steer the boat away. I'll protect. He's like, fuck. Okay, hold up, hold up. Let, let me do this then. Like, it just now that I'm am conscious and know what I'm fucking doing, he's gonna cast sleep on everybody, and I need everybody to roll. I think it's a wisdom. I'm guessing not me, or pigeon, right? No, no. Yeah, just that's clear. What's everybody's current HP? Eighty-two. Okay, sixty-two and forty-five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Rhaegar, you're not in combat, but this does affect you anyway. Yeah, okay. Okay, Milani. She failed. Okay. Rhaegar's the only one that passed, and he only passed by one hit point. Wait. Uh, I cast sleep, and the roll was 13d8 to see how many hit points it would require to put anybody to sleep. Anybody that has less than 81 hit points instantly falls asleep, but you have 82, so you're still awake, Rhaegar. All you're doing, Rhaegar, is you're looking over the side of the boat, and you're just singing the song that the sirens are singing, and you're just having a grand old time. You don't have a care in the world. Cool. But everybody else, you pass out. You're fast asleep. Everybody on the boat, the crew members, everybody. Everybody's asleep. Could I just go, like, knock him out and then he technically is still asleep after the fight well with the spell already cast well i'll tell you what you can do a combo with him if you can hit Rhaegar with a spell attack mm -hmm. then um i'll say that he has less hit points to where he will fall asleep with the spell so go ahead and see if you can hit Rhaegar while he's being distracted and then i'll say that he'll get knocked out sure what a spell do you want to use and it? just use a cantrip just use something simple uh, that will deal at least one point of damage to him so he can fall asleep i've really only got fireball or fucking eldritch blast. Then, yeah use fireball sure do it um, with advantage too because he's not in combat and he's not paying attention mm -hmm. to you so That's just see fine. if you hit him yep i'm just gonna find my fucking spell modifier 25 does that hit you, Rhaegar? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Roll your damage, Norbit, like normal. And then, no matter what, you're going to deal enough damage to pass him out, but he needs to know how much HP he's going to have by the end of it. That's fine, yeah. Uh, it's only a 1d10. 9. Okay. Rhaegar, you take 9 damage, and you pass out instantly. You're asleep. With the rest, the rest of everybody else. So we're all asleep now? Everybody's asleep. Uh, the captain looks to you, Norbin, and says, yeah, I'll, I'll steer the boat as far away from here as possible. Um, just if I happen to zone out, I need you to hit me in the back of the head as hard as you can. Okay? Great. Okay. I've, I've got to make three wisdom saving throws. If I fail, I'm going to tell you, and you're going to hit the captain. If he fails all three times, you're going to knock him out, and he's going to go unconscious, and you're going to have to find a way to use his body to steer the boat. All right. Okay? Ready? All right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do the rolls, it, and I'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, first one passed. Great. Great. So see if you can hit him. It's a 1d20 plus your, uh, your strength modifier. Uh, 1d20... Oof. 19. That hits, so he gets conscious back. Alright. The last one passed. Okay. Great. You guys get away from the area, and you no longer can hear it, but everybody's asleep. You look at the captain, the captain looks back at you and says, alright, so... Uh, 
we're going to have to spend a full day getting everybody recuperated and I'll try to figure out how to get us back on course. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to have to take a full fucking day just sitting here getting recu uh, recuperated and getting a nice long rest and shit. But I was going to quickly warn him if he ever, uh, if he ever turns like that again or turns on us at all, I will murder him. I mean, I don't know if you know how sirens work in orbit, but it's the fact I, that we yeah, don't have I, control I do. of that. No, I so, know. I, I do. I'm just letting him know. So he's like trying to keep on top of it, basically. Well, it's like a warning for if he ever turns on us. Yeah, it's. I, I didn't intentionally turn on you at all, but it's the fact that with sirens we don't have control over that that you're we're lucky the fact that you're who you are and you're immune to it so thank thank the gods for that but that's actually where we're going to end our session at thank you guys so much for listening in on this session i'm i apologize that this is such a short session but it basically got them through to they're going to have one more encounter after this uh after that they will finally reach the next island so hey at least we got that look. Are you seeking some slick new gaming gear to add to your arsenal? Our friends over at Inked Gaming have developed their site into a one-stop shop for all of your tabletop gaming needs. From vibrant looking dice to cleverly designed dice bags to sweet sleeves, play mats, and a whole lot more. Their site is rich with quality goods that will help you up your game. Team Inked has been a friendly, reliable supplier to the gaming community for nearly 10 years, and we want them to continue growing for the next 100. In fact, we love their products so much that they didn't even approach us to promote them on the, our podcast. We wanted to utilize our affiliation with Inked to let people know about their gear. So head on over to InkedGaming.com today and get your hands on some awesome gear that matches your game and your style.